uh, market makers will pull out their liquidity because they don't want to get wrecked on like pattern mm -hmm. loss and things like that, which is why you get these big violent movements. You can settle already in the mempool. We don't need to yeah. go to the AMM to execute this trade. You can even settle all of the different tokens between each other to find the mean price for everything. And it is something you can only do on Polkadot. We're just spending on governance provides some sort of multiplier. You guys are giving away way too much alpha. Where's the Hydra DX stablecoin? The last team which is your good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Space Monkeys blasting off with the guys from Hydra DX. We have Valerie back from the original animated Space Monkeys. We have Jakob Panik, the CTO, and Lol McShiz, Head of Ecosystem Growth and Development. Welcome, Thank you very everybody, much. to the show. Hydra DX has been a, a great story. I, I love the product myself. A short while ago, Hydra DX was $22 million and a dream. And now we have this amazing product. What can we say about the current state of uh, HDX? So right now we've got the Omni Pool, which is the big liquidity pool in the center of, of Hydra DX, yeah. which is sort of like the major building block uh, for the protocol, which we're now starting to add additional features to make that more efficient and more usable. So DCA, which as you said, you've just been uh, using yourself, which allows users on chain to spread out larger orders over time, yeah. um, which in this space I think tends to be quite a uh, a common sort of uh, trading pattern, it's just sort of like, oh, I want to buy every X amount of time. Um, we like to automate things as humans, so uh, why not put it on chain? How did you guys automate? Because isn't there a whole parachain dedicated to automation? Yes, uh, <laughs> there is. I think with um, DCA, when we originally decided to do it, it was decided that it was a super easy piece of automation that, that we could do. Um, and I think it was one of the, the famous sort of like three weeks sort of expectations that, that it would take to do. Uh, ended up taking significantly longer than that in the, in, in the end. Um, but given that it's such a critical part of the model moving forward to make it more efficient um, for users, it had to be something that was sort of deployed on chain and, and could control fully that way, I think. And at the same time, we wanted to implement time away to AMM, uh, like uh, to split swaps that would be too high with slippage to, to, to a bunch of smaller ones. Yeah. And it's actually the same feature as DCA, but it's like in a very short uh, period. So like we got two in one by doing that. Yeah, it's important to mention here that actually the requirement of DCA, the technic from a technical perspective, really required us also to build this natively on our chain because with our DCA you can basically place, place a trade as frequent as every block. Using third-party power chains for automation uh, could be a good idea for more like one-off things that need to trigger at a given point. But for this very high frequency trading, we thought it is better to uh, overcome the challenge and, well, basically have on-chain this year using our own yeah. scheduling system. It's also easier for other power chain treasuries to automate their buys of other tokens if they need so. For example, DOT, if they need DOT for parachain slot, they can place it trustlessly on chain through XCM and, and that would be probably much harder with uh, third party. So cool. So how's the Omnipool been performing expectations versus reality? Performing, I, I think it looks good right now. Yeah. According to the technical yeah. specifications. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I think Kubo often coins that it's uh, what we launched so far is like the, the training wheels V1 version of yeah. Omnipool. So, I mean, when you launch something so novel, like when you initially launch it, you just hope that it doesn't break, right? That it doesn't all go horribly wrong and you've just worked like you, your idea was dumb. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like that was like the proof of concept, which is why we also steadily increase the TVL. For, you know, we didn't just yeet in 20 odd million dies worth of liquidity at the start. Yeah, I mean, not only proof of concept, it is actually the foundation upon which we are building everything else, right? Like, I would actually like to refer to what Rob said in uh, here at Space Monkeys at what, the 100th episode. We were discussing several projects and we were talking about Hydro DX and I remember Rob saying like, we're now becoming a product team, right? Yeah, so yeah. we started from like building the foundation for for everything, which is the Omnipole, right? And now we can increasingly focus on the user needs and ship features which will dramatically improve the user experience when trading in the Omnipole, right? So like 
you have not too much liquidity in the ecosystem or in any ecosystem, okay, then we can have DCA, right? You can split your orders in smaller chunks because like, let's say you're an average user that wants to like expose themselves to a certain parachain asset in the ecosystem. You're not interested in buying, let's say 10,000 worth of this asset right now. You mm. want to buy it today. So for example, with split your trade, spread your trade, it is possible to say like, please let me accumulate 10,000 worth of that asset over today. And by doing so, you basically, you split your trades in very small chunks, which execute much more efficiently, right? With less slippage. Yeah. And then with, after every trade, you let the arbitragers do their job and restore the price balance. So in the end, like a trade which would cause a very big trade impact with low liquidity, you can still execute it in a matter of, within a day, right? Just by spreading it, splitting it in chunks. So Beautiful. Not only end users, but also other parachain teams. So for example, we want to be a provider of price feeds. Other parachains can use this to pay fees, transaction fees in any currency. Right. And then we can provide also the swap back to their native token if they wish so. so like, you would, you would get the price from Hydra. We have internal oracles that we, like, uh, we have uh, uh, exponentially moving average uh, prices on chain. So that means like uh, we store last block price and then we store pr price that is average over 10, bo 10 blocks. And then you can use this on your other chain to actually um, uh, compare this price to your token and then pay, pay transaction fees in other currencies. And then if you accumulate enough of these tokens, you can sell it off the, through XCM. So uh, like providing these services to other parachains is also important. So we are building a backbone of liquidity for Polkadot. Absolutely. Now, you guys did have something happen where you had to shut down the Omnipool for a second, yeah. didn't you? Can you talk a little bit about what happened there and, and how you guys responded and recovered? Security of the platform of the Omnipool and of the funds there, which are user funds and also protocol on liquidity is our top priority. Right? Yeah. So we have been working with the assumption that, yeah, we have to be as well prepared as possible in any event, right? So we sometimes take extra precautionary measures. So for example, when we post adding liquidity, it was this kind of extra precautionary measure. We have like a multi-layered security strategy, right? So like we have very uh, thorough reviews, research, right? And also economic audits. Um, then we have also a rigorous review process during the development of the features. We have also audits of the functionality itself, so the Omnipool has been audited. And then as a latest layer of security, we have a generous bug bounty program, right? So yeah. we want to make sure that if there is anything that slips through this process, right? And this can happen because humans can happen mistakes at different levels, right? So even if you set up many layers, something can go to the end. And this is why you have exploits in many protocols, right? What basically uh, happened was that um, there was uh, a vulnerability reported through our bug bounty program. It was by one of the top 10 white hat hackers in Unify. So this is like a very reputable um, bug bounty program. Um, wow. So yeah, the report, once we got it in, it was still quite vague, right? So it needed some time to see what potentially could be done. But yeah, like in a nutshell, if you would uh, operate with very, very big amounts of liquidity, right? Like assuming that this liquidity could enter the chain and like nobody would notice it and pause certain functions before that, um, you could basically place huge, huge trades um, with providing liquidity, there was like a certain sequence which could lead to draining some value of the Omnipool. And this was already enough to trigger our uh, emergency response mechanism. Uh, so we immediately uh, closed the hole, which was uh, basically we stopped other users from adding liquidity because part of the, the part of the exploit was adding very, very, very big amounts of liquidity. Right, right? Right. So by sealing this gap, we knew that nobody could exploit it right now with existing funds in the Omnipool until we uh, researched and developed a fix, which makes this kind of exploit not economically feasible. Yeah. Right? So we have implemented fees on several layers, which also notice any price, big price manipulation attacks. We tested it, we saw that it worked, and only after we deployed it, uh, we enabled adding liquidity again. Um, Brilliant. Basically, most of the time that we, we had the fix in probably two days, but it took maybe 
three weeks or something like that to restore ad liquidity function or maybe a month. But everything was uh, like we were just che rechecking and uh, research, like our research team was doing math to confirm that this is no longer possible. And, yeah, and so, trading so just never stopped, right? No, no, no. Yeah. That, that, was, that, that was fine because... And also removing liquidity. Yeah, removing stopped. liquidity was so not stopped. Existing LPs could still withdraw the liquidity yeah, if they right. saw the need to. So uh, we didn't see any big exodus or anything happening, right? No. I think the community saw that we are handling it properly. Yeah, for uh, sure. Uh, that was well done. Well, okay, great. So, Lola, yesterday in your presentation, you described a few features on the horizon. So we've got um, dynamic fees that essentially uh, look, reviews uh, volatility of an asset and um, or volume of an asset and will we'll adjust the, the trade fee level um, based on what the Oracle provides it, uh, which essentially can make um, LPing more, more profitable during times when you'd um, perhaps normally get wrecked through and permanent loss. So okay, so more volatility, more fees. Because ordinarily, um, during volatile markets, uh, market makers will pull out their liquidity uh -huh. um, because they don't want to get wrecked on like permanent uh -huh. loss and things like that. Oh, and which okay. is why you get these big, violent movements. Oh, um, that's so and interesting. LPs know that that's when they get wrecked on yeah. on impermanent loss. So oh. if you incentivize them to stick around mm. with dynamic fees, then you don't get the, fl the like, volatility and the fluctuations. And we're uh, in the process of developing uh, HDX native staking as well, oh. um, inflation non-inflationary. So that is currently in, in the implementation phase. Where does the reward come from if it's not inflationary? From volume and trade fees in, in the Omnipool. So uh, initially it's from HDX liquidity in the yeah. Omnipool. Pool, mm. uh, and any trade fees paid go into a separate pot, right. which is then paid to stakers. So ah. it is potentially, initially, those rewards could be low if the volume is low, um, but you'd expect those to then scale as the volume increases. So nice. it sort of aligns the, the, the rewards with mm. the actual use of the platform. I think it's important to say that the staking is um, created to incentivize governance actions. So like uh, we, the more you do the um, more you vote in governance, yeah. the more bonus points you will accrue and that will unlock faster like uh, staking rewards for you. So. Okay, so this uh, participating in governance provides some sort of multiplier on your on your rewards? Uh, yes, yes. You guys are giving away way too much alpha. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, I mean... Like, it was this supposed is... to be a bit of a secret still. So that's what's just coming up. What are some of the features that are up in the air for what's to come? Order batching and um, back running auctions. So the idea of order batching is that you would... Right, right when you have like an AMM, you have a bunch of intentions from users yeah. coming in, right? So somebody wants to buy something, somebody wants to sell something and trade right, certain assets. So basically, what you can do is, before those intentions hit the actual AMM and get executed, you could kind of execute them against each other. So like, if I want to buy uh, 10 dot and you are selling 10 dot, then we can settle already in the mempool. We don't need to sure, like, sure. go to the, we don't need to like, necessarily go to the AMM to execute this trade. Uh -huh. And this could be super interesting with larger trades, right? So like, uh, so yeah, you would have execution you do like without- a portion tickets. of the trade too, like? You could do a portion of a trade, right? Yeah, it right. doesn't have to be exactly matching, right? Yeah, yeah. You can even you can even settle all of the different tokens between each other to like find a like a mean price for everything. So it's it can be very interesting. And then if you add a spot for backrunning to the collator that is building the block, you can he can get the price difference uh, from that, like he would arbit back to the like market prices, which he thinks is correct. Back running is like positive way of NEV, right? So like you have front running, which is a bad way of uh, NEV, a bad type of NEV, and you have back running, which basically allows somebody to, once you have all the trades, right, that are about to basically be executed, you have somebody who can look at them and basically execute some trades which will maybe improve, so add their trade to it. So like if you see that somebody wants to buy a huge amount of dots and then this dot will cause like a lot of slippage, you could also like uh, basically arbit and uh, basically provide the dot that you're willing to buy with the other batching this gets executed against each other. And you can provide more efficient trading for the users. So, next feature? So, other features we've got on the roadmap, which we want to sort yeah. of like decide what's the next priorities. We've got um, the bonds. Um, so, you may have heard about bonds through the likes of Ohm, uh, when we had Ohm season. Um, essentially, 
people always joked that uh, OWN would have worked a lot better had it had an AMM at the, at the center of it to, um, to trade the liquidity rather than providing it externally. Um, but essentially, what it allows to do, rather than using HDX uh, for liquidity mining incentives endlessly, which, as we know, is just you know a, a, a down only for for the for the asset in question, Bonds essentially allows you to sell a batch of of HDX at a predetermined discount for an asset. Uh, so, for example, IBTC, which would then just be added straight into the uh, Omnipool as protocol and liquidity. Um, and there's all sorts of cool things you can do with maturities and investing schedules on those. So, um, and then secondary markets for those as well. So uh, there's a, a lot of cool opportunities for, for bonds uh, as well. Money market is another one that we've got on the, on the, the feature. So um, a lot of DeFi is now heading towards vertical integration of all sort of aspects of, of DeFi. And one thing we're really missing is a, is a, is a nice lending and borrowing facility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously Interlay are now uh, working on something similar for their, for their Bitcoin DeFi. Um, so yeah, allowing people to, for example, provide liquidity to the Omnipool and then borrow against that as a collateral, because obviously we can, mm. with our own internal oracles, can like liquidate those. Um, yeah. Being the block producer, you can determine which which, which transaction types are, um, are, are where in the block, so to speak, um, which is uh, what we do with the DCA, for example, they go at the start of the, of the block. Um, so that you know, leads to more orderly liquidations and things. So typically these, Money markets have like liquidation fees. Like yeah. there's there's obviously borrowing fees and lending fees as well. Yeah. So you know if you've got a big pot of of assets in the centre, then why not make that work, right? So uh, it's a way of uh, again adding another revenue stream to the to the uh, Omnipool being able to self sustain itself. Guys, um, where's the um, Hydra DX stablecoin? <laughs> Who could told you about the Hydra DX? There is, there is no such thing. <laughs> no, I know. I'm just saying. Yeah, exactly. Where is it? Seems like, seems like a piece of, uh, of so, the whole DeFi ecosystem. So um, we, we we joke at the moment that that Learner has become somewhat of a, a stable coin. But it's a joke. Um, it's just a joke. Like I mean, Learner has been having quite a stable value, but. Once it becomes tradable, it will be more difficult to keep its value stable. Yeah. Presumably, it does have some value stabilization mechanisms, um, but still, whether those will be enough to make it actually stable, um, it's about to be seen. But it's not one of our primary goals uh, for the moment. Yeah. But yeah, things change quickly, so you never know. Of course, know. of course. Okay, that's so interesting product map. But what's the what's the first feature we each want to see? Is it the same? What do you want to see, though? I just like I, lo I, I like the idea of um, all of the the block reordering, ordering, order batching things, just because yeah. it can make the trade super efficient. Although whilst volumes are low, it doesn't have a, a an initial immediate impact, but it is really exciting, and it is something you can only do on Polkadot, like the way that the chain is set up. So. I think that that's really exciting for me. But at the same time, something like bonds allows us to get more protocol and liquidity. Um, so yeah, but then, and then yeah, it's hard to it's hard to say. I want it all now, and Jakob always tells me no. Yeah, I mean, for me, engineering-wise, the order batching yeah. is definitely very interesting. But it's a big feature, and uh, currently, with the volumes, it's um, it's like a cat and a mouse, or like a chicken and egg. Uh, that yeah, do we get a bigger volume because we have more efficient trading, or do we first get uh, the bigger volume and then? plug in the feature that will make it uh, increase its efficiency. Right. It's like, yeah, we need to decide, shuffle around. Uh, but yeah, there will be some security features first, probably. Um, we want to have a system where if large, large XCM uh, transactions are coming into the chain, we can defer them, or, uh, make them wait for a period of time so that if mm -hmm. somebody sees, okay, this transaction is probably from some hack, uh, we can pause it. So uh, people don't so use the, you to like get out of a, of a hack or something like yeah, that? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So if somebody wants to exit through Hydra, we would sure. we, we would be able to react. Interesting. So like, I don't know, uh, there is $20 million in Hydra and then $10 million, $10 million yeah. transaction is incoming, something is fishy. So And there will be a governance truck for that, probably. And, yeah. Open about? Gov is coming. Open Gov, I know, so interesting. Your governance community is probably one of the most active um, in the ecosystem besides the relay chain governance. Your governance also happens like quite quickly. 
Like it seems like something goes up and then it's implemented pretty quick. Yeah, so we've got, I mean, the defaults are it's three days of voting. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a launch period every three days, which is obviously faster than, a lot faster than Polkadot, obviously faster than Kusama. Um, sometimes things happen even faster than that. These are generally pre-agreed. So um, quite often we'll do a referenda which places an on-chain remark with some specific understanding that the community agrees on. Um, so things like listing a new asset in the Omnipool, due to obviously how volatile crypto markets are, you don't want to be launching um, with a like three day old price yeah. for an asset because arbors are going to come in and just make honey straight away. So uh, you, those need to be done fast. So we'll place an on-chain remark like list, uh, add CFG to the Omnipool uh, fast track referendum. Yeah. So we'll get um, pre-approval from the community for the technical committee to like fast track it to three hours, for example. Mm -hmm. um, same with the, D the DCA orders from the Treasury at the moment. Uh, we're we're fast-tracking those for three hours because we've already agreed the, the total budget, how we're going to do it, what schedule we're going to do it on. Yeah, yeah. So it, it make, you know, we don't need three days of voting because we already know it's been approved. Right. Um, but that's all manual fast-tracking and things at the moment, uh, which is where OpenGov can come in and sort of like alleviate some of that. Uh, how much of that original DAI has been deployed? We had 22 million initially yeah. um, in the Omnipool at the moment. I think there's about 8 million, I think it's about 8 or 9 million. Um, we've got 4.8 million at the moment, which is DCAing into HDX, IBTC, and DOT. So cool. um, the DOT is for, you know, part of it will be for next uh, parachain lease, uh, part of it will be just to add to the Omnipool, and part of it will be for uh, like getting liquid staking versions like uh, VDOT in the Omnipool, for example. You're going to use protocol own liquidity for the lease? Yes. Yeah, so the, the, the protocol will, will uh, fund itself yeah. um, for future leases as long as they and, remain in place. And we also encourage other parachains to do that, right? Especially if they're listed in the Omnipool. Sure. Um, it's actually one of like our major value propositions for other parachains B2B that actually so you can you can yeah you can like basically XCM funds over from your treasury right undergoing a governance vote so you don't even have to use like multi six or you know any trusted things just start a governance to transfer some funds to your sovereign account on HydroGX and then you can DCA, for example, Aster. We have now Aster in the Omnipool, so they could send over some Aster, and they could DCA it into DOT. So they could slowly, very slowly accumulate DOT, right? And then they can use this to transfer it back to their chain, and they could even place a bit, right, with their governance. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're really reaching the, the, the time and place where all these things can be done permissionlessly, right? This is super sweet. So Val, what changes with OpenGov? Well, with OpenGov, we're going to have more decentralization, right? We're not going to have console anymore. Sorry, Limo. We're not doing it for the meme, right? Or just for the brand. We really believe in decentralization and really want also the protocol to be independent and to be able to take decisions completely independently and to not have any entity of, of control. And also, we are, the reason why we are so bullish on governance is because, you know, if you think about it, governance and XCM are the two really, really special features of Polkadot yeah. that not many other ecosystems have, right? And then the combination between the both, right, that you can do certain actions with your liquidity and they really comes from the community. So it's complete decentralized decision and, you know, you can manage liquidity in a multi-chain way, trustlessly, right, and, and without any you know, like trusted third parties, it's, it's super powerful. I think we'll have a lot of challenges to find the right parameters of the tracks, right? Given the, you know, the turnouts that we have and the decisions that need to be made. Sure. Uh, so this will be like an interesting journey, probably gonna do it first on Basilisk and after that on Hydra. Um, but yeah, it is a very important step for us. Beautiful. So you mentioned Basilisk. Uh, What's going on with the snack? We don't hear about it too much anymore. Um, so what's uh, the story? We're stuck out for several months now. It's pretty much been a case of uh, when, when uh, is the Kusama polka dot bridge mm. going live, right? So the original vision for Basilisk and Hydra was that um, Hydra has this amazing Omnipool, but you don't want price discovery to happen there and you don't want yeah. super immature tokens in there. So you need something which is more reckless and crazy where people can launch the shit coins and just, uh, you know, uh, yeah. make hay while the sunshine sort of thing. So um, that Basilisk is supposed to serve that for Hydra, but at the moment they're, they've obviously got that, they're, they're severed in, in connection. Um, I hear, I'm hearing Q3 
or maybe Q4. I think Joe, Joe said like three that. months. He said for real this time. For real, for real, <laughs> three months. Okay, <laughs> maybe three months is the new three weeks. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's running on the test nets, so okay. hopefully, yeah. once the audits are finished, we can, yeah, we can start bridging and bridging uh, Kusama to Polkadot, and yeah, having price discovery. I, I would hope to see more LBPs on Snake. Yeah, that that was actually like really cool uh, from Tinker. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. cool. LBP is an important one, but, but you know, yeah. we need price discovery on Polkadot, and yeah. it's, it's a pain point yeah. when I speak with teams and they want to get their, they, they hear about the Omnipool and they want to get their token in there, but, but due to, you know, we need to have a certain amount of the asset distributed and we need to have the price discovered before that can happen, mm. um, but we can't provide the other part of the solution, so at the moment it feels very much like, nah, sorry, touch it and, 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 and that's it, so yeah, right. we desperately need that on, on Polkadot. Um, in order to sort of like evolve as a as a DeFi ecosystem for sure. Because you guys aren't. Are you guys taking external price feeds or no? No, no, no we are our own. Uh, our, our Omnipool is our yeah. price feed. Is there a big spread between the Omnipool and like Sexus? Not for long. Um, no, not oh. so. Um, AMMs always rely on arbitrages yep. to to make. We've got several active arbitrages. So there's a few bots you can see now. Yeah. Um, if we've got in our Discord an Omniwatch channel and like each of the um, the addresses have like a little emoji and things like that. So there's this flower that always arbs ETH. Uh, there's a lion that always arbs DOT. And you can just see it just constantly throughout the day, just like bang, bang, bang. That's how I know the prices are moving in the markets because I'm just like, oh, that, that, that account's bidding ETH. That means the, the market's moved up. So, uh, but there's also a few uh, manual arbitrages as well, like yeah. um, community members who've been doing it manually since we launched the Omnipool, um, which typically you don't get very far with manual arbitrage because bots are doing it. Yeah, super fast, right? But uh, given how early we are in in the development, yeah, we still got a few manual arbitrages as well. So they close that gap um, with a small delay, but it's it's not a very big delay anymore. They're, they're getting they're getting faster. Amazing! Very excited about uh, this protocol. Well, what are you guys thinking about the external DeFi space and how HydroDX fits into that? Do you think about that at all, or? I, we we say there's sort of like two main arms to the the overall success of Hydra. There's there's winning within Polkadot and there's Polkadot winning. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, we're sort of tackling things on, on both fronts mm. to try and make that happen. Um, we need a bustling DeFi ecosystem on Polkadot. Um, clearly we're geared up for enterprise adoption and, and such like, as you can see from some of the talks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we need a, a thriving DeFi community. Um, there are some great projects like um, Interlay and Bifrost that are doing some great things and we're really excited to keep working with them um, on some DeFi initiatives to just try and bring some attention and excitement to the ecosystem that, you know, uh, Polkadot isn't dead. Mm. Like, you know, you see the, yeah, the jokes yeah. all over crypto Twitter and stuff. So, um, uh -huh. yeah, that's a predominant focus for us at the minute. I'm looking forward where we see more, like right now, a lot of parachains are finishing their core products and like polishing them and, and making them work. And now it's the time for interoperability of the parachains to shine. We have the XCM, which is basically a programming language that you can use to interact with all of these chains and uh, using one chain to, to have identity, second chain to have like a multi-sig account yeah, yeah. structure and using Hydra to actually pay for everything uh, in the ecosystem to be like, that. that's for me really exciting. So. Very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're stronger together, so let's fucking go, Polkadot. Mm -hmm. I love these alliances. <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for your work and making uh, DeFi easy and pleasurable on Polkadot. It's uh, been really, really nice. Yeah, thanks, so, yeah, thanks looking forward to seeing what's happening. Thanks Thank for coming you. up. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, buddy.